What's up guys, Ian Sandusky back here again for Let's Machine. Today we're going to go through how to drip feed using RS-232 on a Haas VF5 vertical mill. Um, as I say in many of my videos, if you have a different machine, you're using a different editor, um, programming in a different language, I have no idea. This may not apply to you. I am by no means an expert in computers when it comes to drip feeding and this sort of thing. This is just how I found how to make it work for me. Hopefully it can be of use to you. Uh, everything we're going to do today is very basic. Things you're going to need, you need a null modem cable. I believe it's 25 to 6 pin. Um, again, look for your machine. Uh, a computer. I'm using Simcoe Editor for this. That's what I use to transmit. And obviously, you need a mill, otherwise you're not going to be transmitting much. Um, very, very basic stuff. Let's go take a look. Let's go upstairs. Then we'll come back down and show you how to hook it up to the machine, all right? Let's go. So to use RS-232, um, I use Simcoe Editor. Simcoe Editor comes with Mastercam X9. Um, I use X9 to program, as I've said a lot before. I have 2017. I'm just not super comfortable with it yet. But after I post out my program, it's going to pop up in Simcoe Editor. So we'll open this up, pretend that I just did it. So here's my program, here's all my G code, um, so on and so forth. Now in Simcoe Editor, when I go up here to transmission, this is how I'm going to send everything. DNC setup, this is how you connect to your machine. Uh, once you have your RS-232 cord connected um, and all that. Protocol, standard serial protocol, I've never had to change this. Most things in this setup, you don't really need to change. You'll probably need to change them once and set it up. After that, you can just select your machine. Uh, I'm using a Haas mill, so I have this set on Haas milling. If I want to set this up, this stuff needs to be set up according to um, your machine. Generally, in the user manual, it will have a section on this and tell you exactly what to put in these fields. Um, this basically just determines how the machine and the computer are going to interact with each other. Um, quick note, baud rate, this is how fast you send and receive things. Um, 9600 is pretty standard. This needs to be the same as on your machine. If you have the send baud rate at 9600, and the one on your machine at, I don't know, 110 or something stupid, it's not going to work. 9600 is pretty safe. I've generally transmitted on it. One thing that's important is the length of your cable and the amount of interference around that cable, you know, uh, fluorescent lights, if it runs close to them, vibrations, if the cable's not shielded, will determine how fast you can send along with the length. Um, if you have a really short cable, braided, shielded, all that, you might be able to send really, really quickly. Um, 9600 is pretty safe. I, I have a 50 foot cable. I run at 9600. I've never had it um, glitch out due to uh, a problem with the baud rate. Um, flow control. This is determining how fast, oh, sorry, not how fast, what's going to determine when to send more information. If my program here is bigger than the memory on my machine, which it is, um, it's not going to be able to take it all at once. So what it's going to do is it's going to load bit by bit, and after it runs that part of the program, it's gonna delete it. So I have my flow control set on software. I've never changed this. I mean, I can only speak from my own experience. I'm not an expert at this kind of stuff. I'm just trying to show you how I've done it and what's worked. Um, I always have it set on software. It's always been fine with me. Uh, again, you're just gonna go through here and set everything according to your manual. There's lots of information on this online as well if you need it. So after I've got all set up, I hit okay. When I send my file, all I have to do is hit here and hit send file. Um, typically, this should already be selected. But when I go send my file, do, 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 if I go into, I'm not going to find it right now. But I can go find my program and physically send it to my machine. Uh, I'll show you how I do that on another machine downstairs. I don't actually send from this computer, so I don't have it all set up, which is why it's uh, acting a little stupid right now. But uh, I'll show you downstairs how I send from my tool room computer. Um, it's really, really easy. But uh, yeah, let's go downstairs. Let's try it out. So most importantly, grab your horn. But this is the cable we're going to use. This is a 25 foot null modem cable. Um, I just have it hooked into the port in the back. As you can see, I'll hold that up for you. It looks kind of like a computer monitor cable. And most importantly, it's mail to mail. I got this for about $12. Um, 
at a computer store. They're not uncommon. Uh, null modem cable is what they call them. So once it's hooked into the machine, we're gonna go hook it in to the Haas. Let's go take a look. So all we're gonna do is pull the cable over top. I'm going into serial port one. As I showed you upstairs, we have it sending serial port one. If you want, you can send it to two. You can have two different machines hooked up to it. I don't really know. Like I said, I'm not really an electronics guy. Take this, plug it in, make sure it's in the right way so you don't bust any pins off. And I always screw them down just so if somebody trips over the cable or something stupid, that way it's gonna stay in. So ignore my alarms here. Um, I had some of my air compressor turned off and I haven't powered up this machine. Um, you can see this is just a standard Haas automation control panel. What we're gonna do is go into current commands. Oh, sorry, actually we're gonna go into setting graph. Gonna go until we find this right here, our setting DNC RS-232 ports. Now, our baud rate, again, is gonna be set to where it was on the other one. Um, again, all these settings have to be the same as they are in the computer. In order to allow it to receive things, we need to turn on the DNC. So if we turn this down, setting 55 is enable DNC from MDI. Again, I have that turned on. It'll probably be off on, hit enter. Now, when we hit the MDI button, you can see the second thing it says here is DNC. So we hit DNC again, now you're gonna get this message that says waiting for DNC. So here's my old computer here. This is the one I run from down on the floor. This is our program. We're gonna hit transmission, send. Machine one, okay. It's gonna start sending. If it has an error, which could be from interference in the line or anything like that, you will see them pop up here. Your machine should just stop. Let's go back over to the machine now. And you can see nothing is happening. There you have it guys. Now we can see we have our program up and ready to go. So what it'll do is it will run this and then as soon as this program, that like that part of the program has been run, it deletes it. So it keeps dripping into the feed. And drip feed, okay? So there you have it guys. Quick and easy way to drip feed RS-232 on a Haas vertical mill. Um, I imagine everything would probably be the same if you're going to do it in a lathe. I've never tried it. Uh, I imagine the system would be fairly similar if you're going to do it on any other kind of mill. Again, thank you very much for watching, guys. Thanks for stopping in. If you want to see more videos, make sure you like and subscribe below. Thank you very much. You take care.